first thing you notice is the cam tail. You come up, uh, the beautiful uh, aluminum body. Launch you these moon-type uh, hubcaps, which you might see a reflection of yourself. As you come up, you'll come across the Zagato insignia on the side. Uh, come around the front, just gorgeous recessed headlights. A very rounded front with the Lancia grille. I think this kind of car, you know, you can intellectualize about it, but it just hits you in the stomach. It's got soul. Uh, when you see one, you can't not look at it. Uh, my car's a 1967 Lancia Flaminia Super Sport, body by Zagato. It has a 2.8 liter uh, engine, three dual uh, Weber carburetors. It's a 2.8. My friends in Italy have laughed. They said, oh, you're now, now you're a gentleman, you have a Lancia. Whereas the, uh, the Alpha was considered a boy racer type of car. The whole series, which was from 1959 to 1967, was about 525 cars. The Super Sport was started in uh, 64 through 67. It was about uh, 125, 150 of those. A woman in Florida was traveling in Italy and bought the car. And she kept the car, I think, in Italy for a month or two to drive. Then had it shipped back to the United States. And in the documentation I have, there's a couple letters where she's asking for new throttle cables because they tended to snap. I put one in myself, and sure enough, a week or two later, it snapped. So I've switched to a braided cable now, and I've never had a problem since. All these cars, they deserve to be driven. That's part of the joy, the smell, the sound. Just the feeling of being in these cars is, uh, is special. I'm not one to just keep it in my garage and look at it, although I have been known to go in the garage and stare at it because uh, it's so beautiful. But uh, no, I love to drive the cars. It's the most fun. It's also a very nice car to drive on long trips. It's truly a grand touring car. So I enjoy it on long trips. It really handles nicely on the road. And my wife particularly loves the uh, trunk, which is huge. So uh, I can't tell her to only pack a small bag like I normally do. The engine's a very steep uh, V6. It's a 2.8 liter and it's got uh, three two barrel um, Webers. It doesn't produce a lot of horsepower, about 154, but once you're on the road, it's geared so that you can cruise 100 miles an hour, no problem. It's funny how primitive these cars are compared to what we, we are used to today. I, I mean, I have a modern sports car and I enjoy it. It's very nice. I know if I get in it, it's going to start. When I get in this car, you know you're in a mechanical device. You feel when you're shifting, you're shifting. I mean, when you're driving this car, you're driving this car. You're not texting. You're not paying attention to what's around you. You're enjoying the experience. The windshield, because they contoured it to fit with the body, it's very extreme on the sides, and they didn't really do a great job of it. So when you actually look out to the sides, you almost feel like you're kind of on an acid trip or something. So you have to be kind of careful looking straight ahead. Like most Italian cars of this era, I wouldn't call it reliable. You do have to you know, pay attention to it. I've had a few little things since I bought it the car was restored very beautifully, cosmetically, but it wasn't driven a lot. So we found a few things that needed to be corrected. Uh, one of the things was the filler tube to the gas tank had been painted. Some of that paint was chipping away and getting it the fuel line. So that caused a lot of problems with the Webers. The drive shaft wasn't really true. So the ride wasn't as smooth as it should be. And we, we've corrected that. Just this last year, we drove up to Monterey and it was just a lovely trip. It was great. We really had a good time. It's really the Zagato body that captured my interest first. It's an all aluminum body and I just thought it was beautiful. And then I started finding out it had some fairly unique features. It has a transaxle, which was unusual. Because of, there's, there is a tiny hump, but the gear shift is not even in the hump because there's no transmission there, it's behind. It's, it's alongside, so that's quite unusual.
And the parking brake, which it's this massive handbrake on the side, it, it really works very well. does have a compartment in the back that opens so you can put skis all the way through from the trunk into the passenger compartment. I wouldn't think about taking it up on uh, snow and ice, but uh, apparently back in the 60s they did. They were always experimenting. Uh, in fact, this car has a very unique feature. It's got these stalks that come out. They're about six inches long, one for the turn signals and one for the headlight flashers. And the thought was they made them so long that you could keep your hand on the wheel and still operate the devices. So they look kind of odd, but uh, they actually work. I have an art background. The way the pieces fit together, it's rolling art. I never get tired of looking at it, and it brings a smile to my face every time I see it.